and welcome back everyone i am back from dragon con it was quite the journey um it was extended this time around we went to a couple other uh, cities on the way there and on the way back um and this will be a video of the haul for that entire trip so not only dragon con merch but also stuff i picked up along the way and on the way back it looks a little bit messy and this is not all of it this is all the mainly artist stuff because i wanted to try and make do my best to make sure i gave information on the artists that i purchased from it looks messy but i do have a system so i will try and get through this really quick because I don't know where the rest of my camera batteries are, so I want to try and do this before my battery dies. So as always, here is the badge for Dragon Con. I'm not sure if the art was different in, for all the badges. I think it was the same, but you get a different category depending on what you're there for. If you're an attendee, it'll say attendee. I was assisting with some friends of mine who have their own business, so I get a vendor badge, which is great because I can skip the line to get into the vendor hall, which is huge. And this year, I was able to get so many ribbons um, it was honestly crazy. I know Dragon Con ribbon culture is very high, but this is the first year I've, I've actually gotten to actually get one. Um, and it, not only one, but a ton of them. They were everywhere. You could either purchase them from artists or they were being given out by random people, cosplayers. Um, or if you purchased a certain amount of stuff, uh, the vendors would give you one. So yeah, overall, this was really cool and definitely a badge I will keep um, for memories. So with that, let's start with the art stuff that I purchased. I'll start with this one because I don't actually have his card. I, I know I picked it up, but I think it got lost somewhere or it's probably in some bag. I don't remember, but I will make sure to put the name of the artist on the screen because this is one of my favorite artists. He is primarily a digital artist. Um, I believe for the most part, he photographs things and then collages them into his images. Um, and then he'll, and other times he'll just create things like on Illustrator and whatnot. Um, so he has a series of haunted, buildings and i purchased three last year and i decided to get one small one of the green because i really like this and it's very inoffensive so it's something i can definitely display in my office at work don't know if i'm going to do that because i love it so much but um definitely love this print then my one of my friends that attended with us purchased this one small hurt sticker sheet i actually purchased this myself last year i didn't have the heart to tell her but i'm glad to have another one because i haven't used the one i bought last year they are vinyl stickers so you can definitely use them and they won't degrade fast like regular stickers so i'm happy to have an extra sheet because this sheet i won't feel bad about uh sticking in places but very cute and she also uh to get a deal on the prices of these prints she also purchased this for me let's see if i can get it out and this is an artist i thought about purchasing from for many many years at dragon con because they're always there um but i never have but she has this is inkwell illustrations i want to say i've bought a pin from them but probably not i know i follow them on social media so that's kind of why i'm familiar with their work but she got me this cool print of this I don't know, fish merchant or something. It's really cool. I love the colors and the subject matter. Very beautiful. Oh, the front says fish scouts, which is even cuter. And I love that it comes in this little envelope. Very nice touch. I'm not familiar if this particular artist was there last year. Apologies for my dogs, but they were in the vendor hall this year and they had this cute little mushroom with his butt sticking out. This is a B grade pin. So it was only like $8. So really happy to have gotten that. There he is, so cute. And then similarly, um, this artist who was there last year, Toto O, um, and here is all of their contact information. And if you're wondering if you can just click on something to get their information, I will be listing all of this info in the description. So feel free to look there. From them, I purchased two of these thermoses because I bought one for my mother last year and a smaller version for me last year. And I loved them. I loved mine so much, but I decided to get a bigger one for myself. And then I got one for a coworker who saw my small one and really wanted one. Um, they didn't have the design he wanted, I think. He wanted one that looked exactly like mine, which was purple. Um, and then in addition to that, I also purchased a gotcha token to try out one of their gotcha machines and i got this little charm it is wood um, i don't care for the design so i'm probably going to give it to my coworker when i give him the the thermos here's a little more information they included this cute card so this is an artist that created their own filipino uh, kind of sanrio style mascots and they just brand their whole merchandise line with it really cute i love it um 
and really happy that they were here this year and they give you this cute little bag with their stuff all right the next one they packed in this cute little box i saw this artist stuff last year as well they were in the vendor hall but they're basically a sculpture artist and i adore these little monsters that they sculpt they also had some that were that came in small little coffee cups and i was tempted to go back and get one as well but i figured no if they're here next year then I'll, I'll probably pick that up next year um which is one of the nice things about dragon con a lot of these artists come back so if you don't get something one year you are almost guaranteed to try again the following year um but i love this it's very hefty i'm not sure what type of clay is used but it's, it has some weight to it which i appreciate um, but look at how cute he is. And he does glow in the dark. I wish they had given me a card, but unfortunately they didn't. So during editing, I will try my best to look at the Dragon Con um, info page for all the vendors and see if I can find something for them. Now, the last thing, also from the artist Ali, I saw this artist called Maha Nation. And there's all their information. And this particular gentleman had 3d printed little ghosts i wasn't too interested in the art itself but these ghosts were so cute to not pick up especially with halloween coming up look at how cute they are oh my goodness and they do light up i don't think these have batteries in them oh they do okay so sorry my light is so bright i don't know if you can see it properly but they do light up. They're super cute. And he did make them in a way that you can replace the battery once it runs out. So I got two of those. He had so many that I'm hoping he's there next year so I can pick up the ones that I was still interested in but didn't grab. And what was nice is that if you didn't like the ones on display, you could ask him if he had any others. Because some of them did have some small little like manufacturing errors. Super cute. I love these. So happy to have picked them up. And that is Jonathan Rosenbaugh. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I, I do appreciate that he packs them in these little boxes so they're safe for the trip home. The following purchase is also from the dealer's hall, but it is definitely an artist. I picked up this $15 tote bag. For $15, I think the quality could have been a little bit better. Um, it is very thin, and I don't think it would carry all too much. But it did the job. Um, when I purchased it, I was using it to put all my stuff in there. Um, it's very cute. It has this ghost design, and it does glow in the dark. And I've already tested that out. It does definitely glow in the dark. Um, here is their information, I'm pretty sure. And in addition to that, I also purchased this cute No Feet sticker from them. Um, one of this is a gift. I purchased this. And this is actually an artist I'm familiar with because I think a couple years ago, one of the booths that always has a ton of enamel pins for sale um, for multiple artists, they sold this set of dice. Um, they, and one of my friends really loved it and went back for it. And the actual artist who designed it was there this year. Um, they had this hoodie that I purchased for my best friend, hoping it fits her. I got a large just in case because I, I feel like oversized hoodies are still comfortable. On the sleeve, it does have this branch of cat paws, which I thought was cute. I'm not a cat person, but she definitely is. So excellent and it's very comfortable very light too it's not really thick which is great for the texas weather in addition to that i also picked up for myself one of their enamel pins or two of their enamel pins this tiny little filler one i have a very similar one but i liked how this one looked and then this kind of ghost girl that was cool I liked her and these products are by dbl feature which you can find on instagram and on their own website so loved that now um, i believe that was the last of the stuff from the dealers hall so we're going to move on to the art show the art show was bomb this year i think for the most part yeah all of this stuff that i've stacked here is from the art show if not i'll just mention it but i'll start with this little bag i'm hoping yeah and I ended up picking two cards from this vendor. So if y'all want to check them out, they do have a QR code. This is Ivy Dollamore. And their card's really cool. I picked up this pin my first go around at the art show. And my second or third, I ended up going back for these prints because I really liked the... I just how pretty they were and the theming. 
super cool and i love this this anime girl it was very jarring she's very much like a fantasy pretty girl artist and then you have this random like really anime-ish girl probably because of the elf factor she made them a little more anime but i love i love these prints and i'm happy that they were still available when i went back um because a lot of stuff sold on the first day this year i think people were definitely realizing that if you don't go back for such a big con as dragon con it's probably going to be sold out but i loved this one for anyone curious the difference between the art show and the artist alley at dragon con is that the art show is more of a curated affair a lot of the time <clears throat> I don't purchase from there because a lot of it is hyper fantasy, which is really not my thing unless the subject matter is good. And a lot of the anime art just doesn't compare to some of the art I've seen elsewhere. That was definitely not the case this year. I found a lot of stuff at the art show that I wanted. This is from a gentleman who draws his own, or he has his own book, I believe, Corey Godby. Very gorgeous art. Um, there's his information, his website and all that. And from him, I only purchased one thing. Technically it was two, but I gave the other one to a friend. The rest of my family just got home, so I apologize if you hear any noise in the background. Um, I'll try to be quick so that my voice drowns out their noise. Um, but anyway, I purchased two of his prints of this series. He had multiple colors with these little guys, each a different pose or different monster. Super cute. I love the expression this one has and the fact that it was purple. I had also purchased a gray one that was more of a zombie one. The leaves were... Uh, dying and barren um, but that one I gifted to a friend I did ha try and have my sister go back for me because at the time I was busy to see if she could purchase the other one for me but he had run out they were very popular so I'm at least happy I managed to get one of them and if he's there next year I hope he has it again so that I can definitely purchase the one I'm missing uh, this one I purchased for my best friend. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any type of information on the artist. I'll try and find them through the Dragon Con uh, artist list, but it might be hard because this is pretty, I don't want to say generic, but hyperrealism is very hard to distinguish for me. Um, but it's really cute. I don't like cats again, but she does. And it's a cat bat on a pumpkin. How perfect is that? Really cute. And then this one I'm really excited for. Um, I think last year I accidentally gifted this print and forgot about it until I was going through everything. Um, but I'm very happy the artist was there again so I could rebuy it. This is by Babs Webb. And um, if there's their information. And they draw a lot of really cool spooky stuff. Very haunting. And I love this print so much. I'm so happy I was able to buy it. Um, the next artist... They had a lot of stuff that I was interested in, but at the time it was towards the end of the con and I had spent so much money. I was just not willing to spend so much. Um, but this is by an artist called Amaluria, Amelia Lannards. She has a lot of social media handles and there they are. From what she told me, each art has their own story. I'm not sure if this is one of them, um, but in addition to the print, I also purchased this... Uh, owl sticker super cute and i believe it is glossy so i'll be able to put that on my water bottle but yeah she has a lot of cool what looks like watercolor paintings um and they all vary she had so many series of paintings on her table animals a mixture of animals like chimeras um this one i i got from a stack that was like just general haunting stuff she had a fish series like a fish person series a fairy series just a lot of variety in her art pieces and all beautiful so I'm happy to have gotten that. And I think I remember her from last year. So I was happy to have found something that I liked so I could buy something. Um, this is actually from the dealer's haul that my friend gifted me. So here's the brand. Um, there's a little story on the back, but I'm not going to read it because that'll take too long. So this particular sculptor is similar to the, the little pumpkin guy. Um, she sculpts her own creatures and figurines that she created called dreamkins i believe it's made out of air paper clay or some type of air dry clay because they were very light but they were so cute i was very tempted to buy them um, but she went ahead and, and just purchased uh, multiple right from the get-go and i'm glad she did because this artist actually ran out of stock on the last day i walked by and they had nothing on their table they were just sitting there because it's a rule at dragon con that you can't leave your booth until five on the last day so very happy for this artist to have sold out but when you buy one of their little figurines they do provide a print to go with it she got two because she purchased two i think and she gave me this one and i love it 
it fills the hole of not being able to buy one of their figurines. This one I'm very sad about because I could not find a card. I can't remember if I didn't pick one up or if they had the QR code and I just didn't take a picture of it, but I love this print. And the artist was very happy that I bought it because I think it's one of their original designs. It wasn't fan art. Um, I think they were selling more fan art than originals, but I loved this. I don't know why. It just looks really cool. I think it represents hunger, um, but very, very cool. I love this. I, again, I will go through the art show list and try to find their name so I can provide y'all with their handles. And then this one, um, I do have their card. It's very pretty. This is Harmony Gong. And from them, they had a lot of cool art, but from them I purchased an original instead of fan art. Very beautiful. What looks like watercolor. Um, very pretty lady. I just love the colors and the style and just everything. Very dreamy. And I really don't have something like this in my room, I think. Mo I mostly stick to spooky and very haunting anime styles. So um, I'm very happy to add this to my wall. And put that at the bottom because... It'll provide some structure to these other art pieces. Um, then the next artist is Siren. I hope I'm, I'm pronouncing that right. Siren Song. There's her social media and the art. They had really cool art, but a lot of it was fan art and I didn't really care for it. So instead, I purchased some merchandise. They had really cute Resident Evil stickers. I, I think I bought most of the set for my sister at first and then I bought I went back and bought this for myself because I really liked it and then I also bought this set of acrylic charms of Clara Asmodeus and Iruma from Welcome to Demon School Irumakun I was so pleasantly surprised to have found any merch from Iruma um, at this con in general she, she was the only one that had it really the series is very not known in the west um i don't think a lot of people gravitate to it but she and i had a nice short little conversation about it and how much we loved it and i went ahead and purchased the set not only because it's cute but i wanted to appreciate an artist that included merchandise of it at this con so i'm very happy to have gotten that um, next from the art show, I got, camera was having a hard time focusing on this, but there's, I got this pin from the art show from an artist called Britt Austin. They had multiple pins and I liked this one. It's very reflective and it says, see you in hell. It's a good size as well. Here is their card. They had a lot of cool illustrations and prints as well that I was tempted by. But again, by that point, I had already purchased so much. I was trying to be sensible. In addition to that, I also got this sticker from them. It's a good size and it fits nicely on my water bottle. I loved the ghost. Their art style was really cool in general. So highly recommend this artist if you like spooky stuff. Next, um, there is this artist, Pole Straighted. Pule Straighted? I can't tell, but <laughs> you can scan this QR code for their information and they have a discord apparently their art was so cool very colorful so abstract in many cases i loved it i stopped there and then the two guys that were with me who were my friends um also stopped and we kind of just got stuck there trying to decide what to buy because it was pricey but it was so good that we all wanted something um and they did have deals so if you bought like multiple prints you got a journal for free something like that but they let me have the journal which i really appreciated and the journal came with a washi tape sheet um so here's the washi tape sheet really cool. I decided to get a different design than this because I was having such a hard time deciding which design I wanted for this particular print because so this print that I purchased comes in two versions. This is the special edition metallic version. Um, it's very colorful, really beautiful and really cool it's printed on metallic paper or with metallic ink it's not textured even though it looks textured but it's really cool um and then the original was this color that the journal comes in i loved this as well so i was trying to decide which version to get my friend flipped a coin and it landed on the metallic so i instead got the regular in the journal and the journal is holographic on the sides of the pages and it's blank which i appreciate because i can use it as a sketchbook i'm lying it's dotted it has dotted pages which is cool 
I'm really happy to have gotten that because their art was beautiful. I don't think I got a card for this gentleman because um, this is actually a gift for my best friend. I got her Frank and Betty from their series of um, Halloween serial pinups. I was going to get the Drac uh, Ch Count Chocula one, but I bought her so much Dracula stuff that <laughs> I wanted her to have some variety. Uh, they were all pretty ladies, so I'm sure... If we, you know, go back and want to buy another one, I could definitely pick one out of the set. But really cool, and I will make sure to look up what their information is so that y'all can check them out. Um, this next one was so incredible as well. Now this one, again, it was one of those cases where they provided deals if you bought multiple things. So one of my friends and I, um, he wanted a shirt. He really, he saw the shirt, immediately wanted it. And then I wanted a print. But if you bought, I think, 100 or $150 worth of stuff, you got a free tote bag. So I went ahead and purchased another print because I really liked this series of original characters they had of these armored up pretty ladies. It is a foil print too. So the, the gold um, is actually metallic foil that shines in the light. Super cool. And the main print I purchased... And this one is in silver. It has silver metallic details. I don't know what it was about her. She was really cool. Her demon dog made out of what looks like ink or something. I don't know. I loved it. Uh, the designs for these uh, characters was were so amazing. They also sold fan art, but none of the stuff they had really interested me. So I went ahead and got the original stuff. And then here is the tote bag. And this is the design that was on the shirt, I believe, that my friend purchased. So really cool. Absolutely happy that I got it. And it's really cool as well because, um, you know, most a lot of artists sell tote bags, but they're not all that special. They're just a tote bag. This one um, has a pocket on the inside, which is really cool. So really useful tote bag that I, I will definitely be using in the future. The next artist is one I've purchased from before. You guys may remember them if you watched my uh, last year's Dragon Con haul. This is by Catawampus Press. And there's all their information. So from them, I decided to go ahead and get two of their pins because I really like their storybook style um, drawings. This is the Spooky Cauldron and it has a cute little bat on the inside against a moon. I love the colors of this. You don't see these colors in enamel pins a lot, so I loved the style. And then this cute tree guy, the Ilwin, it says. I think it's featured in a lot of their art. Um, and I went ahead and got a print that I wanted last year, but I decided to pass on um, and bought a different one instead that is in my haul from last year. Really happy to have gotten it this year. It's so cute. I love the little thingies at the campfire. And the, the colors are just beautiful. That's mainly what attracted me to them. I love the teal against the dark. A uh, mix of what looks like a purple and blue, and then the sky, and the pale. Love it. This artist was actually in the Artist Alley. They weren't at the art show, so that was my bad. I did forget some Artist Alley people. <laughs> And on that subject, here's another person I forgot that was actually at the Artist Alley. This, I don't... Oh, here they are. I, th I think they're called Crow Time. I'm not sure. But that's what the tag says. Um, I'm sure you could look this artist up because crows were very much their thing. They had these crow plushies and I thought about it the whole con. They were 25, which is eh, more or less um, decent for plushies. But on the last day, my friend and I went back up there and I saw they only had one left and I went ahead and purchased him. He is so cute, so soft. The embroidery is well done. He looks a little bit mad with that little downturn um, on his eye. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Um, but in addition to that, I also picked up this Goose Bumps <laughs> sticker. I thought that was funny. I wish it had their information on the back, but that's fine. So that was fun. I picked up one item from this artist called paperlarva.com. Uh, they gave me this freebie sticker. I believe there was another freebie sticker they gave me, but I, it must have been lost with me pulling things out of bags and whatnot because I don't see it. But it's fine because this artist is amazing and I definitely recommend y'all check them out. I was so tempted to buy multiple things from their booth, but again, they were a little pricey. And towards the end, I was running out of money and didn't want to go over budget, so... <laughs> But I will show y'all what I got the, from them. I got this amazing, very thin too. It's it's breezy. It feels breezy. 
Um, this is in a large size and they said it was unisex. So hopefully it fits me because I haven't tried it on. But I got this amazing, um, it's not a hoodie. It's more like a shirt, but a long sleeve shirt with this print on it of this girl. It says cut here at the top and it has some um, stuff on the side of the sleeves. They had a t-shirt option as well, but you didn't get the sleeve stuff with the t-shirt. I have too many t-shirts anyway, so I went ahead and got the long sleeve. It's hard to, to stretch it out to show y'all, but it has this like fish and scissors thread. Um, here's what the other side has. It's different. Really cool. Has a snake. So they actually had this image as a print and I was initially going to get the print, but it wasn't in colors I would have preferred. I think it was in pink. So when I saw the t -sh the shirt had, had it in purple, instant purchase. And they had, again, like I said, they had multiple prints that I was interested in, but again, it was one of those things I had to just decide um, whether I want one or the other. And I ended up just getting this, but if they're there next year, I'm definitely going to pick that up. I think um, definitely for sure. I hope I'm not wrong, but I believe that it's the last of the Artist Alley and Art Show stuff. So in the meantime, we'll take a small intermission so I can show you all some of the cards that I picked up from artists that I was interested in, but I ended up not purchasing anything from. But trust me when I say that their art was magical and I would definitely recommend that y'all check them out. Here's the last one. So really cool. Um, in addition to the vendors, the art show and all that stuff, there were also some stuff happening at Dragon Con, for example. There was, um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to make a vlog. I'm going to have to go back and see if I actually captured enough footage to make a vlog for just Dragon Con itself. Um, if not, I'll probably add it as an intro here in this hall um, that y'all can skip if you want to. But they did have, um, I think it was Netflix there with a one-piece truck like a takeout truck that was decked out to look like a one piece ship. Um, and they were giving out uh, straw hats that I was not there for. I wanted to see the parade and they started giving it out at the same time the parade started. So I wasn't able to backtrack and go get one because they had a limited amount. They were also giving out ice cream, but the line was always long. I just didn't feel like waiting. Um, but they did give me this card to advertise the new series. I haven't watched it yet. I'm not really a One Piece fan, um, but I thought that was cool. And I'm sure a lot of the One Piece uh, fans were getting a good kick out of it. Um, in addition to that, I did attend two workshops. One was hosted by my friend, my vendor friend. She did alcohol ink um, workshop to show you how to work with alcohol ink. Now I will say what I did took days to dry. I don't even think it's dry right now. Oh, it might be. It's like a little bit still wet. Um, but it was really fun. I really liked it. Um, this one is still wet, as you can see inside the bag. Um, and then this one, I didn't add any image on top because I just liked how this came out. <laughs> so you just add, you buy ink and then you add it to a specific type of paper that's non-porous, add alcohol, and you can blow on it with a little uh, thing to move the pigment around really fun. In addition to that, I also attended Sarah Spaceman, which is a cosplayer on YouTube who's grown in popularity um, since she made a Miku cosplay, I think. I do watch her videos and I, th I think I'm subscribed. Either that or her videos just get suggested to me whenever she posts one. <laughs> but I do like how thorough she is with her sewing techniques um, and all the graphics she adds to her videos. I'm not a sewer. I've wanted to for the longest time. And I, I do sew whenever I have to. Like I've sewn the details to my witch costume last year. I've sewn small things like buttons back onto garments. But I've never actually learned techniques. And that's what I was most interested in. So when she, I learned she had a, a beginner's sewing class. I was really interested in, and I paid the $20 to join. Uh, in the class, we made a tote bag. Um, she did go into some detail about what techniques were used, um, but I think it just went over my head because I kept making mistakes. Um, I felt really rushed because I made one mistake and it put me behind everybody else. And I was kind of just stressed out trying to finish um, in time before the next class started. So she ended up helping me a lot, which I do appreciate. She was very nice. Um, 
I was just not enjoying those last 10 minutes, but I am happy with the bag that I ended up making. You can see here, I missed like a whole section of stitching. Very terrible. Um, and I accidentally put one of these straps backwards. So <laughs> I think it's this one. Um, but I did enjoy more or less doing the tote bag. They're, the machines they had for us to use were amazing. And I loved the, the, the scissors so much that I ended up purchasing a pair of mine. I'm left-handed, so I did get some left-handed scissors, but very excited to use these to actually have legit fabric scissors. They weren't cheap, but um, they do um, sharpen them if you bring them to their booth for free. So next year, you know, if I need to, I can just bring the scissors and they'll sharpen them for me. So that's really cool. So yeah, other than me being stressed about finishing my tote bag, uh, the only other thing I would have to say about this workshop is the fact that um, because I was rushed, I didn't feel like I actually learned how to make the tote bag. I can't, if I tried it, I'm sure I would figure it out, but the steps to actually put the bag together were lost because I was trying to catch up and I didn't hear her instructions. So unfortunately that part um, did not stick very well. So so if I had to have one criticism, it's that they, I think the class was an hour and a half long. I think adding another 30 minutes for anyone who messes up and anyone who may want to ask questions, um, because this is like a how-to or a beginner's sewing class would be very beneficial. I was honest. And I think a lot of people were in the class when they asked us, has anyone sewn before? And a lot of people actually said yes. But again, I was being honest by saying I'd sewn before because I have but I'd never actually learned the actual techniques and the, the general stuff because I just went at it. As far as like, if someone was interested in making costumes and whatnot, um, I think a little more detail into the groundwork of knowing how to sew and make patterns and whatnot would have been more beneficial. That's just me though. I'm sure um, everyone else was fine. Enough of my rambling though. Let's keep going because I still have a lot of stuff to get through. Um, so I did purchase, or a friend of mine helped me purchase as well. He was getting a lot of pins from a common booth we usually buy from every year that has a ton of pins that they sell. This time around, their booth wasn't just pins. It was a lot of other stuff, so we initially missed it. Um, but I did get these two. Um, oh, I thought this was the artist that had the their branding on the back, but they don't, unfortunately. So I apologize. I can't tell y'all who this belongs to, but they're really cute, and I love them. Love the style of these pins. They're going to look so beautiful. Um, I purchased two things from a booth on the first floor that sold, their primary thing that they sold was elf ears. They had a lot of different types. They were all made of latex and they also sold the spirit gum, I believe is what it's called, as well as the antidote to get it removed. I never had to use the antidote. Um, it always just peeled off fine for me. Um, but I did purchase some elf ears because this year I went in costume. I used some cheap elf ears that I had bought on Amazon, but they kept falling and Obviously, they didn't look that real. They also didn't match my skin tone. I tried to use the foundation I had purchased to, to cover them up, but it wasn't the same. So I'm really happy that there was a booth that I was able to purchase from. They were pricey. They were like $40, I think, because I got some of the bigger ones. The bigger you go, the more expensive they are. But Elven Caravan does paint them to your skin tone on site and puts them on you if you ask them. So I thought that was really nice. The Spirit Gum was um, an extra fee but I'm fine because I never, I'm not going to purchase like a whole thing just for these ears. Um, so I was really happy with my purchase and they were comfortable. They were light. I did not feel them compared to the Amazon elf ears that I had purchased. Um, and if they're there next year, I'm definitely interested in purchasing more. The other thing that I purchased was something I noticed towards the end of the con because again, their main thing is selling elf ears, but to the side, they had a single rack that had a bunch of these cool bags. Now, I was carrying around all of my stuff in this, which I purchased many, many years ago. Um, it did its job, but it has to be attached to a belt. And when I actually had stuff in it, um, it would slide down to where it would bunch up like this. Now, don't get me wrong. This is beautiful. It was handmade by someone who I also have like a, not a petticoat, but a decorative piece to go on your Victorian skirt beautiful garment, but it wasn't doing the job that I wanted um, with as much ease. So I purchased this bag and I absolutely love it. It has a multitude of pockets. It already comes with a belt that does expand. I don't think it could go up to XL sizes, but it fit my waist just fine. Um, it has a bunch of clips. I used this pocket for my debit card. I used this for my phone, um, some cash, 
So, and it's really well constructed. And then you have this pocket here in the front. And then also a pocket in the back, which I didn't realize until later. Um, but here's, they also have their tag branding on the inside, the fairy's pajamas. Um, and then it has this pocket. I don't know what I would ever use this for, but it's nice that it's there. It's a long pocket along the side. So really cool, really cool, versatile bag that I absolutely love. And they had different styles. I went with the slightly bigger one and I love it. I'm realizing now looking around that I didn't actually buy too much from the vendor's hall. Here is a power bank that I purchased from a vendor whose card I, I have somewhere because they have a warranty on all of their products um, and the warranty is on the card, but I just like the way it looked. Um, it's very small, very light. Um, I like the feeling of the matte finish on the outside. I think it's only powerful enough to charge your phone once, but that's good enough for me for a small portable charger. Um, in addition to that, I also purchased a bunch of snacks from, again, a vendor whose card I can't give y'all because they, these vendors don't really provide cards, really. I doubt they have a website. But I did get this $3 bag of little um, jelly stick things. I got this honey from a different vendor um, who I think I bought tea from last year. So their information may be in a previous video of mine if you're interested. And then I got this uh, fruit candy gummies. And then I also bought a Jujutsu Kaisen Ramune. And this thing is delicious. Sorry, there's a paper towel there. I was wiping it down because it was in the cooler uh this is blackberry flavor and obviously i only bought it because it was jujutsu kaisen but the flavor is actually really delicious so i ended up buying a bunch to bring back to my sibling um so yeah i definitely recommend if y'all see this around an asian market or something blackberry is pretty good as a ramune flavor i also have this miku sporty maid figure that a friend of mine bought me um, I really appreciate that he purchased this for me because it was 35 and I just wasn't that willing because you can find her cheaper elsewhere. Um, but I really did want to buy a figure at this convention. At first I, I thought I was going to buy a Gundam, but the only one I'm interested in right now um, is actually not a Gundam. It's the Suleta kit that you can get. Um, that's, I think it's part of the same series as the Ariel that I recently purchased. But um, I did find her, but she immediately sold the first day and she was $45. I just wasn't willing. But yeah, I really appreciate, appreciate it that he purchased this for me because I have been eyeing her for a long time. Um, I really like her, her little maid outfit. It's not a typical maid. Like I said, it said sporty maid. And she's really cute. I've already opened her. And she's one of those noodle stopper figures, so she's sitting down and pretty tiny. But despite being tiny, she's really nicely detailed. Um, and yeah, she's super cute. I love her. I can't wait to set her up in my figure shelf. I love her hair. Really cool. She's got a Y in the back. And again, the details are really done. Really well done. And... Her shoes are really cool too. Um, so I did again visit the Lolita booth. It's always a Dragon Con. They're the Lolita Collective. I don't think I have their card this time because they didn't give me one. Um, but I, I, I will link their information in the description. From them, I purchased these two enamel pins. Um, they ha didn't have too much this year that I wanted, um, but I did love how big this teapot was, and it's cool and clear. And then this uh, teacup. It's just really pretty. They're from the brand Lively Ghosts, um, and they weren't that expensive. Uh, obviously, the teapot is huge, so it's a little more expensive, but it was only 15 I was expecting it to be like 20 25 and then the teapot was 12 And then I did still purchase two blouses from them, though, um, and I love them. They are each... Well, this one's a 2X. It always varies with the brand, so Little Dipper... Um, is the brand of this blouse. It comes with extra buttons, which is great because um, the buttons are not the sturdiest things in these garments. I love their little card. <laughs> but here's what it looks like. It's really cool. I love the this ruffling here. Um, and it looks a little more formal than what I currently have, which is more of like the cutesy style. But it still has ruffles in the sleeves. 
um, this buttoning detail. The buttons are really pretty too. Um, but yeah, I love this. It fits me in the chest area just fine, which is where I need it to fit. And I think I'm going to use this one for my Halloween costume this year because I will be a vampire this time around. This was $60, which I think is reasonable for a Lolita brand of blouse. Very expensive, but very well nicely made and high quality. And then the next one that I purchased is more on the frilly side, but it's from the same brand of the previous one that I purchased um, last year. And this one, I, I still got a 3X. I did try the 2X to see if it was maybe the blouse or if it was me. <laughs> it was me. So three, I'm a 3X in this brand, Vilia. Um, they have a lot of information on their card that I can't read. But that's the brand. They also come with extra buttons, which are really pretty. Um, this one was $55, so only $5 cheaper. Um, it also has like that detail on the front. Um, but it definitely has a lot more ruffle. And this one has a big kind of uh, bell sleeve at the end, which I thought was interesting. So I'm definitely going to try that out as well with a costume. And it's multiple, multiple layers on the sleeve. It's really well made, really beautiful and light. Um, that's the thing about these blouses is that I think the other brand was a little thicker. The Vilia is definitely thinner and a little more transparent. So you'll want to wear a shirt underneath, um, but very well made and light. I don't get hot in these blouses. I wore the one from last year for my costume and walked all up and down Dragon Con, um, Peachtree Street and all those things through hotels and I was not like dying from the heat or anything. If you're not a Lolita, they're very versatile and work for a lot of things. So I'm very happy that they had some there that I could try on um, in person and know that they'll fit me. I will say though, the one from last year fit me when I first bought it and it's now struggling in the chest area. Um, but I think that's because I did wash it a couple times in the washing machine and I know that's not the recommended thing to do. So just make sure to follow the Lolita brand care instructions so that your clothing doesn't shrink in the wash. It's salvageable if it does shrink. Um, it just is going to take some work to get it to stretch out again. The last thing from the vendor's hall that I actually forgot about because I was wearing this as part of my costume and I packed all the costume stuff in one bag. Um, but I did actually purchase a flower crown. It's a little messed up now because it's been in the suitcase. Um, but this was $40. I was a little hesitant to buy it because of the price tag. But once I put it on, all of my friends were like, it matches so well with your costume. You absolutely have to get it. So I did end up getting it um, and they were right. It matched so well. I took off the flower crown I had initially made for my costume and wore this the whole convention. It's really pretty. I wish I could tell y'all who made it, but I unfortunately did not get any type of business card from them. Um, but it's really pretty. I, I really like it. I do think it's worth the price tag. It doesn't have like flashy flowers or anything, but it is very intricately made and I really liked it. And then just to show off, here is one of the things my vendor friends make. These are, um, there's an information night Phoenix designs. These are picture frame, uh, pin boards. So she has a layer of cork board and velvet, I believe under this, um, that she combines together and then just glues the back, uh, sealed. Um, and you can put your pins on this that way they don't get lost. And I tend to just spray paint cork, cork boards that I find at thrift stores. So the, this to me looks very elegant and I would only put my best pins on it. But I do think it looks amazing. I'd like, look at that. That's so cool. And I don't know how well they sold at this convention, but I hope they will sell well enough that she's able to make it a staple because it is really cool. It doesn't look like a lot now that I'm looking at it, um, but most of it is art, so that makes sense. Um, but this is everything that I purchased at Dragon Con, but this is not everything that I purchased while on the trip, because after Dragon Con, we actually went to New Orleans as an extra little side trip, and that was so fun. When we first got there, we didn't head straight to the Airbnb. We actually visited a thrift store, and I'm not going to include most of what I bought there because um, it's mainly like houseware stuff. I purchased like some jars for my mother, some clothing for myself, 
for work, I found this. Now, I'm not sure if it works, but I love the spooky town stuff, and they're always so expensive that I'm actually going Halloween shopping tomorrow. So if I find something like this, um, I'll have to think about it. But I do love that they do this every year. Um, I don't always like what they create. Like, the themes just don't hit for me. But I do appreciate that they do this, and I did like this design. So this is supposed to be a tree. And it has this hook with a balloon on it and some little figurines. So the tree is supposed to spin the balloon around. So display wise, this might not work in my room, but it's definitely something cool to have for when I decorate for Halloween. Uh, for $13, when I know these retail usually starting at like $30, $40, I thought that was a good deal. Um, and I did already open it and it does have all the pieces in there. I just don't know if the mechanism works. Even if it doesn't, I still really like the figure itself. So I'm very happy to have gotten that. While in New Orleans, we also visited the um, Café du Mont, which I know is a very popular uh, touristy kind of French coffee stand. Uh, it was very nice. That's definitely what it looks like, just a little more rundown. Uh, we also visited the church and a couple other shops in the area, which I think I put all of it in here, but I'm not sure. So here's the Cafe du Mont New Orleans um, information. From them, I primarily just got coffee. Um, I didn't actually buy this at the cafe. We went to the cafe, had some coffee and uh, beignets, which were delicious. Um, but a lot of the shops surrounding this cafe carry their stuff. So I purchased this coffee and chicory um, tin that has their coffee in it. Um, it's not, and I also got the K-cup version for my boss because <laughs> I, I was trying to pick up, um, some gifts for them and that's really all I can think of. I also went to the Mary Laveau's House of Voodoo. I was very interested in voodoo shops. I kind of knew I wasn't going to find stuff that I would care for too much because while I do love the macabre and stuff like that, voodoo uh, practice is not something I really... Oh, here's their map to get there. Voodoo practice is not really something I do or care to do. But I did still pick up some stuff from the shops. I got these incense cones um, in the La Luna smell and these are straight from mexico they're in spanish i noticed that a lot these shops had a lot of stuff that were straight from south south america or mexico um i also picked up this volcanic rock bracelet i've always wanted one of these but anytime i find them in jewelry shops or conventions um uh, booths they're always really expensive this was only ten dollars and i see them at like the renaissance fair for 20 which is so crazy so the whole purpose of this bracelet is that the volcanic rocks, you are able to add essential oils and the rock absorbs it. It's porous. So you'll be able to smell that fragrance throughout the day. Um, so I think this is really nice stress relief for people who need it. I got this magnet because I really liked their logo. Zombies House of Voodoo. So there was one called Mary Laveau and one Zombies House of Voodoo, but they were more or less the same thing in my opinion. They sold this exact same items. And I also got two postcards for my friend, best friend. So yeah, really cool imagery. But that's all I got from them. I didn't really pick up too much. There were some stuff that I was interested, but the prices just weren't matching what I thought they were worth. <laughs> um, but in addition to that, on the way out, um, and even while we were there, we did stop at a couple targets, which is so random. Um, but at the time, um, I think, I can't remember why we stopped at Target initially. I think we needed essentials and we visited one in Atlanta. Um, and while there, I realized the Zombies season two was out. So my friend and I really love these little dolls and we decided to search for them on the way back. And we found them. We definitely found, I found all the ones that I wanted for the most part. Um, we did stop by a Walmart in Atlanta and they were on sale for $7, season, season, series one. Um, so I picked up the little pageant girl she's in there really cute so i was very happy about that especially for seven dollars these retail for ten so they're not the cheapest thing but they are very cute and very detailed season two did not disappoint they have so many they're so cute i think i'm going to make a video um a short video of these because i've already opened them so there won't be any unboxing but it's going to take me way too long to show you all of the ones that i got but uh 
<laughs> as I'm pulling them out, you'll see exactly how many I purchased. So I got a ton of those. And then in addition to that, um, a lot of the Targets had their Halloween stuff out. I don't really shop at Target, so I was never aware how nice the stuff they have is. Um, so here is the set of two coffin-shaped bottles. Initially, I wanted them, but I wasn't sure what to use them for. And my friend pointed out, we could definitely use this as a reusable container for traveling because you can put your shampoo in there and that way you don't have to bring the big bottle. I thought that was such a good idea. Um, so I picked up a set of two. I also picked up this tray. I don't know what to put on it. It's a little, but it's nice. It was a little trinket thing. I could definitely have one on my desk at work as well. This was an impulse buy because it looked really cool. I kind of wish it actually opened, but I believe it's sealed. Um, it is really cool though. And I love the color. It lights up. I did not realize that when I purchased it. That's really cool. Um, but at the last Target we visited, they did have some that you could actually open and, and store stuff in. I don't know what I would store in it, but I kind of wish I'd gotten that one as well. But it's Target. I'm sure I'll find similar stuff at home as well. Um, they also had these cute little bat plushies for $3. I couldn't pass this up. It was so cute. There is a uh, sand or whatever you call it on the bottom, the beans, so that it stands up upright. Very cute. I love it. And then I also picked up this single mitten. It's very small, which I appreciate because um, sometimes you don't need the big ones to pull stuff out of the oven, but I love the design. And again, I think it was only $3. Yeah, $3. Again, with the trinket trays, um, I think I'm going to put some plants on here that I can then, you know, take outside whenever I need to and they need to get a little bit of sun, but I don't want to carry them all at once because um, I did buy some plants, which I'll get to in a second, but these were $5, and they had two versions, a green one and this one, and they are metal, thin metal, but metal, so really useful, and I, I love the design. I found three more zombies. Oh my goodness, <laughs> how much money did I spend on these two? Um, and then I also picked up these for a dollar. They're paper cutouts, but I have some bats hanging on my in my office at work, and I thought these would be cute to put up. Um, so there's that. Now, the, the main reason we went to Target was to look for the zombies, but while in Atlanta, we did visit uh, Walmart a couple times to look for essentials for the Airbnb, and while there, I stumbled across a small version of the Squishmallow Pikachu, and I immediately bought one. We tried going back the next day to buy my friend one because she wanted one, and they were already sold out. So since then, we were on the hunt for these Pikachus. I actually have to look for him because he wasn't in my suitcase, so he might be in the second suitcase my sister has, and I'm hoping I didn't leave him in New Orleans. That will be sad. Not too sad because I found the jumbo one at Target. They had two, so my friend was able to claim her own Pikachu Squishmallow, and I am so happy that I got the more squishable size of the the Pikachus. So now I have both, assuming I didn't leave him in the smaller one in New Orleans. I was going to give that one to my sister-in-law because she wanted one too, but I'm just happy to have this. He is so squishable. I was very surprised by that too. When I bought the, the small one, I'm not a squishable person. I do think they're soft and really cute, but I've never bought one. Um, but the Pikachu that I had purchased was very huggable. Um, I was expecting them to be really not as stuffed very well to keep them squishy but that that Pikachu was very huggable um, there was enough stuffing in there to keep him a little bit firm and marshmallow feeling he is very much the same and I love him I love him so much he was $24.99 while the medium one was I think $15 so the size jump I think is worth it and I love him I, I can't tell y'all how happy I was to find him it was so random too on a whim I just decided you know I'm already in the toy section let me go see what they have in the Pokemon section they had the the Sonic Squishmallows as well which I know are being sought after as well that Target in particular was very well stocked with stuff because my friend also found the rare Lord of the Rings uh, Magic the Gathering cards there. So these target hunts were very fun and very successful. So that part of the trip was just so fun to me. But we did not stop there because in addition to that, we also stopped at Cracker Barrel to eat. Um, and I've never been there, so it was nice to see a new store. Because they, the way Cracker Barrel works is it's a gift shop, but there's a restaurant attached. So we ate, went back to the gift shop. I only really bought snacks from there. I got like Hershey bars and some candy. Um, but they had some Halloween stuff, so I did purchase this um, 
Bullfrog Slime Hand Soap, primarily for the bottle. I really liked the bottle and it's a good size. I could definitely refill it with more soap. Um, and it was, I think it was $6. So pleasant surprise in the Halloween shopping. Now the last few things, I won't show all of it because I already gave them to my mother, but my friend and I also like going to plant nurseries. So we visited one in, or two I think, in Atlanta. The second one was our favorite because they had a lot of unique plants. They had pitcher plants. I was very tempted. I got this plant called a philodendron, philodendron cordatum. I really want an indoor plant that, oh, it needs water. It's very dry. This had to survive from Atlanta all the way to New Orleans and then back home. Um, so <laughs> it makes sense. It needs some water. I definitely am going to repot it because it, this container is very small. I was very surprised how small the containers were that some of these plants were growing in. Um, but I really wanted an indoor plant that required low sun and would dangle down if you put them high up. Um, and my friend said this is the kind of plant that does that. It wasn't very expensive, so I was really happy about that. I also purchased this uh, succulent, which my friend referred to as a panda paw succulent. Um, I think I need to water it soon. I know they don't require too much water, but it looks a little dry. It was $6.99, very cute. Um, and she said it's pretty low maintenance as well. This one I think does require a little bit of sun, but it's, it's not, you know, too intense that it needs all the sun. I also got a zebra plant, which I don't have in my room because it needed water and it's on the bigger side. So I'll take a picture of it to show y'all what it looks like, but love that one as well. And that one droops when you don't water it. So that's what I need. I need a visual indication of when I need to water it. So that plant shop was in Atlanta, Georgia. This next one was in New Orleans. It was cool, but I think it had more common plants that you could find at hardware stores. However, I did pick up um, this little planter. It doesn't have a hole, unfortunately, at the bottom. So my friend said we could take it to somewhere she knows of that's local to us, um, and they'll drill a hole in it for us. This is $14. Um, it's a small size, so I'm definitely, I think I'm going to put the succulent in it. Um, once that hole is drilled in. But I just loved how it was Halloween themed. They had a lot of Halloween stuff in that shop, oddly enough. And I just liked the design of this one. Very cute. So happy to have a little Halloween planter. This is everything, more or less, that I purchased at Dragon Con and then in New Orleans. Not including, obviously, gifts I've already given to people, some of the thrift store clothing, apologies for my dogs. <laughs> I am very happy with everything that I got and I very much enjoyed attending the convention this year. I tried going to panels, but I guess I was really tired because I did have to wake up earlier than everyone else to actually put on my costume. I wore makeup, I wore a wig, all of it. Um, and that took some time in the morning. So I was really tired by the time, um, I was at the convention walking around in the heat and the one panel I tried sitting in, I was falling asleep. I do think they need a little more variety. I noticed this here with the anime track. That's really, that and the horror are really the only tracks that I follow. I noticed with the anime one, there just wasn't a lot of options for panels and a lot of them were just very generic and boring sounding. I just didn't bother. Um, so I do hope that next year they make a little bit more effort in that regard. The parade also seemed very sparse in categories that I always see a lot of cosplayers walk with. Especially the Resident Evil group in the parade was a lot sparser this year than I'm usually used to. So I have noticed um, probably people moving on or some people unwilling to come back due to COVID. But I do think it's getting better and it helps that Dragon Con is understanding that um, too many attendees is not good for the convention overall, even if it is spread out between hotels. But overall, this convention is one that I enjoy every year. Um, there's just so much to do, even if the panels aren't your, to your thing. If you enjoy shopping like I do, there's just so much to look at and see. I very much also enjoyed my trip to New Orleans. It was a ni very nice city. Um, a little on the dirty side, I won't lie. Um, there were very many smells walking throughout downtown that I noticed, um, but we did visit Cathedral there. It was very beautiful. We visited a couple of different shops, not only the voodoo ones. Um, I got to try a bubble waffle, which was really cool and very delicious. And the beignets were both delicious. I tried one from um, Cafe Du Monde and then another store, which I can't remember the name of. The coffee was good all around though. So I'm very excited for what city we decided to take a trip to next year, um, either on the way to Dragon Con or on the way back from Dragon Con. Um, definitely going to start planning for that 
immediately. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are interested in any of these items, again, I will leave all the information of the artists in the descriptions. Please do check them out if you're interested. A lot of these artists were very nice, so definitely check these artists out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video.